what are the different types of trade unions generally they have craft and occupational unions the industrial unions and general unions what do we mean by craft unions is that one particular type of job or skill category are picked and they are members of a union people forming one particular type of skills they are taken let's say craftsmen or say for example people working in a particular department they are taken into unions they represent the ideas and they defend the benefits of this particular union industrial unions they belong to a particular industry workers from a particular industry are taken as members now, general unions do not classify into white collar blue collar workers across the industry and across different industries are taken into general unions let us take a look at the following examples where in germany trade union one trade union represents all organized employees in japan unions are mostly organized by employer or it's by establishment and in france general unions are based mostly on politico religious lines now who are the trade union representatives who are involved in the day to day affairs of the trade union they can be full time paid officials looking into the legal financial and administrative aspects of the job or part time voluntary officials at the branch levels wherein they have a limited role and workplace representatives those appointed by the employees themselves on a full time basis to look after the employee issues now what are the sources of trade union power how do they gather such strength and momentum what is the source of their power now the degree of support what is the degree of support that a particular trade union enjoys with the labor force what is the numbers that is involved how much respect do they command a particular segment of the industry in a particular region now what is the perceived success or failure what is the level of success what was the history of this particular trade union have they achieved something like better for the workforce what is the set of benefits that they have achieved for the workers in the previous disputes and what is that they brought about in taking the relationship forward the bargaining environment depends on the employer hrm policy again this, the power of trade union depends on hrm policy of a particular employer now wherein the policy is weak trade unions gain an upper hand they can fight for more rights wherein employers who have better hrm policies their scope is restricted because the employer themselves are sensitive to the needs of the workforce they provide better benefits so again the local labor markets when the unemployment rates are high the power of labor union is not so good or high because in the absence of jobs you don't really have anything to bargain for so the power again derives from these aspects of employer hrm policy and the local labor markets and what is the culture of the union what was its history in the broader perspective how do they go about doing their jobs now these are the sources of trade union power now let us take a look at an ad wherein a trade union union is pitching for membership what they can do for a member in a scenario which affects the rights of a worker If you were to have a dispute with your boss, he or she would probably call the HR department. And, if necessary, HR might bring in the company lawyers. If the dispute became really serious, they might even contact the group's international law firm or call in outside experts and consultants. This is the same boss who often says that you, as an employee, are far better off representing yourself. Do you want to even out the odds? A trade union recognition can be automatic or voluntary depending on the number of uh, members involved and the share of membership and what is the say that they have so it can be split into voluntary and automatic recognition. Now, what is the ideological framework behind trade unions that unitary ideology which states that the needs and the goals of the employer and labor workforce is one pluralist ideology states that these are two different ends of the spectrum and you need to strike a balance and radical ideology is something that workers are always exploited by the management and it needs to strive for their benefits so these are the three different types of ideology involved and when it comes to different stakeholder interests it is often said that it is always a trade off between the different stakeholders what an employer wants and what the management wants versus what the customers want and versus what the trade union wants so different wants are clubbed together and what is the best 
benefit for all involved what is the maximum which can be done in a particular scenario gives you a different stakeholder interest now why do we need to go for cooperation cooperation is an approach because it has a rational appeal in which you get solutions it's a win-win situation it's called rational because you get a benefit out of this approach problems are solved and it has an emotional appeal cooperation gives you an avenue to resolve your disputes so that you can move forward and cooperation is a common cultural value cluster which means that cooperation is considered as a core value for example in Japanese or Swedish industries you have team working and high level of interdependence of work groups it's a key value which defines their working styles so cooperation defines your success now what are the four possible orientations it was defined on these dimensions wherein you have HRM and IR organizations which have high HRM and high IR orientations so the first is the new realism wherein organization has an orientation towards high HRM and high IR practices these are valued and employee is at the top of all the decisions so it fits into the new realism quadrant then we have the traditional collectivism wherein you have high IR and low HRM practices third is the individualized HRM where high HRM and low IR is the style and the black hole wherein there is no regard for HRM practices or IR practices so obviously there cannot be any benefit or results which can be expected from this kind of organization wherein you have low orientation towards HRM practices and IR practices so these are the four possible orientations of HRM and industrial relations mix what are the approaches to industrial relations first is the adversarial where the employer calls the shots Ma employees are expected to fit the bill there is no option for them they have to just follow the command and the order of the employer and when it comes to traditional there is a good day-to-day -day working relationship but ultimately employer has the final say in the affairs of managing the different issues now partnership now, there is a healthy relationship feedback is obtained but still employer takes the final decisions and power sharing is the ultimate form wherein decisions are taken by the employer in consultation with the employees there is power sharing wherein employees have a say in issues which affects them let's define employee relations it consists of all those areas of HRM that involve general relationships with employees through collective agreements where trade unions are recognized and through commonly applied policies for employee involvement and communications so this is a broad definition of employee relations and it has developed over the years from your traditional concept of industrial relations it is a shift in approach to the term employee relations now what are the objectives of employee relations to give a summary of the entire chapter to build stable and cooperative relationships with employees Know, which defines your success in the business environment achieve commitment through employee involvement what happens ultimately is you achieve commitment of employees through their empowerment and involvement and when you develop mutuality you tend to have better job satisfaction and you have high moral levels and what as a business you get is success which helps you to compete in a tight business environment